Hi everyone, we're here today and we're going to interview our dear friend Ferds. Um, Ferds just finished his MBA. He's an entrepreneur. He dabbles in trading and wellness. So, Ferds, let's start with your uh, very sentimental Tag Oyer collection. Yeah, so um, since we're talking about watches, right, uh, I would say that this is the piece that started it all. Okay. Um, when I graduated from grade school, <laughs> from the Ateneo, <laughs> yes. in 1992, um, my dad took me on a business trip with him to Hong Kong. Okay. And that was my first time inside a real watch store. Okay. And he took me there and... And you were a lot smaller. I was obviously a lot smaller. <laughs> right now it's uh, fitted to my wife's wrist, okay. so... But I was probably that small at the time I bought okay. it. And um, he picked it out actually. Okay. And uh, that's Very classic. Off. Very classic, the Professional 2000 series. Uh, this came out in the early 90s. And it was kind of a transition model between um, when Hoyer became Tag Hoyer. Yes. So, uh, and, and, they they, and they started <coughs> this green and red. And they started the green and red, yeah. right. So this would be the most classic look of the yes. Professional series. Yes. <clears throat> Obviously, I have the bigger version of it. So yeah. this, at the time, this would have been a full men's size. And you can see the difference now in the bracelet too. Although you can see that the, the case is pretty much the same, but it the is. bracelet has changed. Correct. It's a bit wider, a bit yeah. um, more, uh, more rectangular. Yes. Right? So, um, as keeping with tradition, yes. uh, when I graduated from high school, my father decided to buy me another tag. Yes. Um, this time, I didn't go with him. He brought it okay. home with him. Um, which leads me to um, my first and currently my only Rolex. Okay. Which is uh, the 1655 Explorer 2. So first, we know that it's, it harkens to Mount Everest. It's got uh, Steve McQueen. Yes. It's got correct. the orange hand. Yes. But most importantly, well, uh, that is actually a, farm, a family heirloom. Uh, yes. That belonged to my great-grandfather on my mother's side. And uh, it was passed down. It somehow ended up in the hands of my dad. And when I graduated from university, uh, that was the watch that was for me. Everybody's gonna kill me, but actually what I like about this watch the most is that the loom is still white. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, that is true. Um, yeah. uh, well, to, well, to be honest, I mean, that, that watch did not get a lot of wrist time even okay. throughout all the years. Even when my dad had it, he yes. would wear it very seldom during it. So it's in pretty good condition now. Yeah. yeah. Well, anything else you want to tell us about this watch? Well, you mentioned the Steve McQueen part, right? Yes. And uh, the funny thing, and I'm sure everybody that watches this knows yes. that uh, no one's ever really seen Steve McQueen wear the watch. Yes. Steve but he's supposed to have purchased it with his own money, even if he was with yes. Tag Heuer. Tag Heuer at the time because yeah. uh, of uh, Le Mans, right? Yes. He, he had the Tag Heuer, um, Le, uh, the, uh, what was the model? The Monaco. The Monaco, yeah. yeah that's right, the Monaco. <clears throat> so apart from Steve McQueen and racing, now we look at the One Small Step. Yeah, so the moon watch. Um, I wouldn't say it was a grail watch per se, but it's always been on my list. And um, when the opportunity came to get get one through my brother Francis, yes, I, I forced jumped at the opportunity. I actually had to trade another sentimental piece for it, which was actually a Rolex of um, my late uncle Roland. Yes, uh, our late uncle Roland, the Thunderbird. <laughs> well, it was uh, it was the um, yeah, it was a, it was a date just that I, that I... Oh, wasn't it a turnograph? It was a turnograph, yeah. correct, okay. that, I, that I traded for that. So, what what made you decide to put it on this leather strap? Well, actually, um, since we, since Francis, Albert, and I do those, the NATO straps... Uh, yes. I always try to swap out and try new straps for it. It just so happens that now it's on a leather strap because I wore it for a wedding recently. Oh, okay. But and of course, we have this beautiful IWC Mark 16, 16 yeah. which is the 39 millimeter. It is a 39 with millimeter. With the coated glass. Correct. Very classy. Uh, it's, a, it's a very classic looking pilot's watch. Yes. Um, personally, at the time, I was a very big fan of the big pilot. Okay. Right? But, um, okay, John Mayer. Yeah, yeah, basically, like John Mayer's <laughs> collection, right? Yes. Uh, the big pilot's very, very nice. They have a really great father and son edition of Belt as well that I really like. But, um, you know, you always jump at whatever opportunity comes and there's an opportunity to get the uh, This is still watch. the original strap. That is still the original strap. You'll see the IWC on the back of it. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And no watch collection is complete without some Seikos, although I noticed this one has a special logo on it. Yeah, yeah, so um, AIM just turned 50 years and uh, I had just graduated last year as well. So um, when they launched this watch, I, I had to have one, I had to have one. I mean, I know you have two. I do have two. Me and my wife both have one since she'll be graduating next year as well. Fantastic. Um, I actually got jealous of your savior watch collection, <laughs> so I had to have one. And, uh, and um, coming from your advice, actually, 
This is number 82 out of 200 pieces. Um, 82 being my birth year. Fantastic. So it says AMO. First owned brand new First owned birth brand year new. watch. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, Fritz, is there anything else that you're looking for or would what would what would you consider as a, a grill watch? Um, it's hard to say what uh, what my grill watch would be. There are a few things that I would love to have. Obviously, um, you have the typical ones like the Daytona, for example. That'd be so you to want have. to have a Daytona? I would love to have a Daytona. Is there a particular model or color that you're thinking of? Um, not really at this moment, actually. Uh, it's just something there in the back of my head that it would be nice to have. Okay. But uh, it's funny because if you look at my collection, I really only have one chronograph, which is the Speedmaster. Okay. I'm not a big fan of chronographs. Okay. I like them much simpler, which is why for the pilot's watch, I went with something that is, you know, no very clear, no, very, very clear, clean, very clean yeah. look, right? Um, so some things that I would be interested in, uh, I recently tried on the Explorer 1. Okay. And again, it has the a 39 nice, millimeter. 39 millimeter. What I like about it though is that since the um, the bezel is very thin, yes. it feels full even if it's small. Okay. So even wearing it uh, as big as I am, <laughs> it didn't seem so bad. But I like those very nice clean looks. All right. Yeah. So guys, thanks for joining us for another episode and we'll see you next time. Thank you.